Hey everyone, uh, Nathan. Uh, I'm recording this on a night jog. As you can see, I am uh, trying to stick to uh, what's become important to me in my life, and that is health and um, keeps me sane. It also is kind of forced upon us. Um, during COVID. Um, so I'm going to start recording things as they come to mind to start a podcast or write for Substack, which I'm already signed up for. I'm the failing philosopher on Substack, in case you're wondering. Um, anyways, I should give you some good visuals. I'm sorry. So the topics at hand. Um, 2020 is over, and uh, just a few days ago, uh, some people who aren't satisfied with the state of our government uh, stormed the Capitol and uh, are frustrated. They believe they aren't represented. And I can understand that. Sorry about the wind. I can understand that. Um, although I am not part of that crowd, um, I am part of this species. And coming from someone who's who uh, I've you know spent a decade, uh, you know, shooting heroin, dying. Um, stealing, uh, being just a really, really bad person, and, well, not bad, I shouldn't say bad, I should say I was responding, I think, to a society that is sick, and um, not just sick with COVID, but... We are, you know, right, if you, if you guys don't remember, we were, you know, pre-COVID, which is going to be, I think, an important date on the calendars of the future. Wow. If you can imagine that, how we've constructed this thing called time, and I just called it calendars of the future. But yeah, pre-COVID, I think, is going to be important. Um, I tweeted the other day about oh wow look at those stars they're they're beautiful i don't know if you can see them but they are um about in george orwell's night oh my listen to that bird beautiful heaven on earth um i tweeted about how in george orwell's 1984 he uh wrote, and this is a fictional book, if, you, if those of you that don't know about it, um, please read the book, George Orwell's 1984, and um, oh, what's his name, Huxley's uh, book on um, oh God. A, Bra uh, a Brave New World, and I think we're, we're slipping into a mixture of those. Um, in Orwell's book, he talks about how families turn on families, how neighbors turn in neighbors um, that work for what's called, in he, air quotes, the inner party. Um, I, I assume that's some sort of governmental agency within Orwell's fictional world. Maybe. It's fiction. Maybe it's not. Um, maybe he was tipped off. Look at that. That is light as waves. And it's beautiful. I'm just pointing out some beauty. So anyways, um, yeah, they're part of the inner party and they turn their neighbors and their family in um, because they're afraid. And um, they're afraid because there are another group of people who um, 
are supposedly attacking them and there's bombs and there's you know announcements over loudspeakers within the neighborhoods about um, basically pushing fear now let's juxtapose that Orwell's fiction of 1984 and the inner party and let's juxtapose that with the corporate owned media and I know people have to have to have a job I understand but there comes a time when you've got to stand for something and I want it to be positive and I don't want it to be violent or illegal so I'll that's why I'm recording this because I know that violence and breaking the law is what they expect and what they want. And they are us. You know, I mean, just because they're in the government doesn't mean that they're bad people. You know, it, they just need to be talked to just like we do. We don't know everything. I don't know everything. Um, I was recently diagnosed with some mental health issues. And... Um, I was, um, sure, I was just zooming in for you. I was diagnosed with um, uh, persistent de depression disorder, paranoid personality disorder, and um, anxiety disorder, um, and a learning disability. And I think a lot of mental health. Uh, issues need to be discussed more and people need to be to know that it's it's okay to talk about it it's okay to to to, to discuss you know your problems because we are one species we have one planet that's why I'm showing you these beautiful things because this is all we have and we got to reach out and take care of each other and talk to those we disagree with and yeah, going back to the books of Orwell and um, Aldous Huxley's uh, Brave New World, if you go, if you read those books, you'll see that in, in Huxley's Brave New World, they take a pill called Soma, S-O-M-A, and it basically makes them happy, makes them content, and they are uh, in what, what I call, you know, this numbed resignation with how things are at the moment. And um, in, in Orwell's 1984, the fear of the supposed bombs and the alerts, um, juxtaposing that with the 24-hour corporate-owned news cycle and how afraid people are and I believe it's having an effect on people's mental health. I think it's having an effect on my mental health. That's why I'm out here jogging. Um, families turning on families. My family, my mother, um, I grew up, she, she, she beat me, she was abusive, she, was, she gaslights. Um, she's put me in jail under uh, false pretenses and uh, now I have a horrendous felony on my record, and it looks like I'm violent. And uh, the other things I've been arrested for, and I'll get into that as we get through this podcast, um, I, I, I'll own those. If I've, if I've done something, I'm to the point spiritually um, that I can admit when I'm wrong. Um, so I was raised by a woman who wasn't raised correctly. And she had several brothers and sisters, all of whom I don't really know. Um, but they were violent, and her father was an alcoholic, and her mother was violent. And so I was raised that way. And now, it's been about three and a half years since I've done hard drugs. Um, and I've been meditating and been on somewhat of a spiritual journey. And um, I'm not saying I've been perfect, but I have. 
since I started this spiritual journey, it seems that uh, uh, how can I say this? This is this is part of the mental damage that happens when someone gaslights you the whole your whole life. You forget things, and you forget your point. So my point was that she saw me happy. She saw me tipping my father off about um, meditations and ways to get a hold of our consciousness and everything that we do throughout the day is, um, it's all up here. It's all how we deal with it in our mind, in our consciousness, you know. Um, you think you have an ego, but it really is just all experience. And so, look, look at this bridge. Beautiful. Although it cuts through nature, but it, it does look like a DNA strand. Um, but um, back to my point. Um, she saw me being happy. She saw me going to the gym. She saw me helping my dad who got sober uh, through Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, a malignant narcissist, which is what she is, um, doesn't want to see her victims happy. And I'm not saying she doesn't deserve as much compassion and empathy as anyone else, because she does. But daily, I, um, I, I have to live with her right now because my record due to her lies and, and previous to that, my own drug habits looks horrible. So if you think it's hard for you to get a job now, it's hard for me to get a job right now. Um, so I decided to, to take a spiritual journey and to, um, get my, my, my body and mind right and take control of, uh, what, you know, of this machinery, of this machinery. Now, obviously over the holiday, I haven't been to the gym because of COVID, but, um, it is Physical activity is, is, is a necessity for someone like me who has an addictive personality or, or um, uh, has just early childhood trauma. Um, I say that because addictive personalities and people with, with childhood trauma tend to... Uh, statistically go a certain direction in life and so that's why I'm labeling that I'm not saying it's a must but I am saying that there are behavioral patterns that indicate that people who are uh, addicted or or have a trauma tend to do certain things like drugs and and then drugs go from to stealing, etc., and then you end up going to prison like I did. And I'll get into that's another story. I have some great prison stories, some horrible prison stories, and um, that's all going to be part of this podcast. Uh, we're going to discuss mental health, um, how we can inspire others to be kind, to forgive, and to talk to people that we disagree with, and. Um, I'm going to I'm going to do this and um I think I'm going to name it future calendars because that sounds I don't know it sounds apt for some reason although I did just come up with that but we'll get into some things that interest me and some things that interest me are physics and quantum mechanics and time and philosophy, but we're also going to deal with um, and talk about, um, you know, the real world and from a perspective of, so of someone who has not had it easy in their life, has made it hard on himself, which I have, um, but has decided to 
change, decided to put something positive into the world and it's just trying to figure out how to do that. So those are all the things that will be discussed here on, uh, what did I call it, <laughs> future calendars um, and uh, a lot more. So please tune in and um, don't forget what I said about, you know, people turning on each other. I know it's hard. I know that people are suffering and angry and um, are broke and frustrated with the government and um, the stimulus checks and all of that jazz. But you know what? Um, maybe we've been focused on money for a little too long. Maybe we can create something equal, peaceful, in harmony with one another, and in harmony with this beautiful planet that we live on. And that's it. So I'm going to start a podcast, Future Calendars, where we discuss philosophy, quantum mechanics, um, mental health issues, getting a job, all of the things that are happening right now out there in the world from a perspective of someone who has been to prison twice, who was raped as a child, raped in prison. Yeah, I was raped in prison, set on fire in prison, um, and who is now um, 41, living at home with his parents. And... Um, because he can't afford to uh, move out. And I don't think, there's no way I can be the only one like that. So we'll discuss all of that and more on future calendars. So please tune in, spread the word, and, um, you know, talk to those you disagree with for the first message on January 9th of um 2021 it is the future the message is to talk to those you disagree with and inspire others to be as good as they can be by your actions and um if you require a savior become one and lay out this template for the future calendars. If you require a heaven, I say look around. Look around at this beautiful planet that we are lucky enough to inhabit. Sorry, I can't get it. It's dark, but look around. This is a beautiful planet. Be a good steward of this planet. And I will catch up with you next time on future calendars. Um, this is Cowboy Kitten, uh, signing out. Peace, love, and good vibes.